so these are these are rights that are being violated um in the background and probably the national space really hasn't really um, got to understand what's happening um since we have come past the issue of um what makes a state a state uh, under the montevideo convention we then get into um the extinction uh the extinction of our state and i see my time is uh running out but um we are going to finish um i'm going to be very brief about it so the issue of extinction of our state a state can be extinct in two ways or it can collapse in two uh, in two major ways either voluntarily or involuntarily voluntarily by probably uh being uh, taken into another uh, into another uh, government say now the hyderabad uh, issue where they just said ah, it's okay we are going to leave or it can uh, be involuntary as in the um, this lovely issue where certain countries or certain blocks were broken down and they formed uh, certain major blocks you know uh, yugoslavia czechoslovakia um, croatia they were broken down and you know croatia came croatia yugoslavia got into um, i think ukraine and all that stuff so you know um, it wasn't because they say they are going to do it it's because international space to the united nations security council resolution and uh, it forwarded that resolution to the united nations general assembly and the united nations general assembly um adopted that resolution and said yeah we, this is what going to happen so in our case for afghanistan it's it's not purely a legal issue it's more of a political issue because you have to also understand that um any state right now that was uh, if probably um china or any of the superpowers uh, was to get into an agreement with afghanistan they wouldn't be getting into an agreement or holding talks with afghanistan they would be holding talks with the taliban and that looks really bad for them and um in that situation then we will have to ask ourselves um are we ready to uh, accept the taliban as a government and to accept um, afghanistan or what the taliban would um name afghanistan in the um in the succeeding years so because you've realized if you've realized uh, for every uh, meeting that the taliban holds there's no flag uh, uh, the, the afghanistan flag is not flown don't we fly the taliban uh, flag so it's it's also a telltale sign of where their mind lies do they really acknowledge afghanistan or two months down the line we are going to hear some weird name or you know uh, now we afghanistan is not afghanistan we are going to call it uh, talibistan or talibistan i don't know what name they're going to give it but um yeah are we ready for that so Taliban in as much as we want we would we would um you know talk about the legal affairs and the international legal norms you also have to realize that the international norms are not as binding as you know what is written down in a textbook they are more political than they are legal in the international space and things flow with the flow of uh what the superpowers will say what will britain say what will china say what will russia say what will germany say what will the european union say what will um the U us say? and um because you see when the us say they're going to put you think well uh, the fight is lost let also let's also get out of here and then the U europeans are like yeah okay this is to know what appear now that this thing has come down uh britain says that they're going to send troops uh you you uh, european union says they're going to set uh, to send some troops uh france says it's going to set uh, send some two or so jets so it's really a political thing more than it is a legal one but you have to remember um even as things unfold you have to ask yourself these questions what is the future of afghanistan you know the fact that major government people are being tracked down and killed major government people have already escaped or are escaping as is you know the guys who are being transported out of afghanistan it's not just some some guy who had his camels and sheep somewhere and goats somewhere 
these are people who are in government who are being evacuated out of um, Afghanistan. So what's the future of, of Afghanistan? And it's not like, yes, there's a percentage of the Taliban who went to you know, good universities and they have the education. And if you look at their game plan, you can clearly see that there are people who are mindful of international relations and they're really trying to get the international, um, the international space on board. But then again, um, you have to understand that majority of those people were just guys in the, in the, in the bush and they were told, uh, come and fight for us. We are fighting for this. And you, you know, after, after this, you're going to see um, Jana and all that good stuff. And, you know, they decided that yeah, it's, it's our because and I want to do this and I want to fight for my Taliban and my people. But at the end of the day, they do not have the know-how of running a government. The majority of them do not have the know-how of running a government. So what is going to be the future of the Afghanistan? What is going to be the future of the women and children? As of now, in Afghanistan, you cannot, um, you cannot walk around without having uh, a male escort you. You cannot walk around without having uh, the, bark, uh, the barker on. You cannot uh, go into a wedding and dance. You cannot listen to certain genres of music. You cannot, I think there's so much um, with, that comes to the Taliban that it's so restrictive of your rights, of, uh, you know, your freedom of expression, your right, uh, your right to life, your right, the freedom from torture. And torture is not just torture that Mutua Mekudunga, it's also emotional torture. The fact that you're constantly living in a situation where you don't know what's, what's going to happen next, who's going to get into your house, who's going to take your property. And that is all the Taliban are doing. We've seen guys who've gone to BBC and said that, you know, I was in, in my house and then this Taliban just came, they hotwired my car. You know, I went out and asked what's, what's going on and then they just put slammed an AK-47 in my chest and told, uh, told me that they don't care who you are or what you're going to do. You're going to take the car if you want, if you want to take the car. And that's the future that uh, Afghanistan has. And it's a future that's full of terror and a future that doesn't really... Um, come down to uh, what Afghanistan was probably a month or so ago. So yes, I think uh, at that I'm going to just um, stop there and probably leave time for questions um, and all that good stuff. Thank you for your time. Thank you so very much, Council Wakili Robert. Uh, so he has explained very well. I don't even have anything. Okay, maybe just something small to add. Or I'm looking at my PIL notes, and uh, if you have a question or a concern, please use the reactions to show so that we can see you, and then we'll allow you to speak as we, as we, I think I'll go first, but if you have a question to, to, to him regarding the, the issue of the Taliban being recognized as a government or not, please, please raise up your hand and we'll be able to see you. So, as we wait for that, I'm, I'm looking at my PIL notes. We were taught by the well-able Dr. Robert Owino. He shared the same name as him, uh, the, the Robert part. Anyway, so the characteristics of states. One, uh, the population can also wait. Uh, the population should be organized and governed by a state. Uh, uh, state recognition is discretionary. I don't know what you have to say about that. Entering into agreements does not amount to recognition. Number three, establishment of a consular or an, like an embassy. Let me admit someone. Mm. Establishment of a consular or diplomatic relations is a tacit or lesser form of recognition. Number four, recogni state recognition is unilateral. Each state recognizes on its own accord. Recognition cannot be reversed. That's number five. Um, and then and at number five, we were given an example of the Palestine. In November 2012, the UNGA, UNGA stands for United Nations General Assembly, accorded Palestine a non-member observer status. Many voting states declared that their vote did not amount to the recognition of the Palestine as a state. So maybe you can talk about Palestine vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. Then number six, oh yeah, there's also another one. China does not recognize Taiwan. According to China, Taiwan is their territory. Number six, recognition is declaratory. 
as opposed to being the element of constituting the state. Number seven, recognition does not have any legal effect. It is a political fact. I think you have belabored on that, showing us that this may not be really a legal issue, but a political one. Uh, number eight, the more a state is recognized, the more it will enjoy international effectiveness. And number nine, recognition possesses some constitutive element. It is possible for an entity to be recognized as a state while its government regime not being recognized, not being regarded. So here we are being told de facto it is. So maybe any thoughts on the nine uh, principles or how I think I should call them principles uh, of recognition in relation to Afghanistan and the Taiwan, ah, not sorry, uh, Afghanistan and the Taliban. Thank you. The rest, please raise your hand. You can respond to those as we expect more questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. I think I got seven. So if you if uh, if you feel I left something out, there are two points I might have left out. Just raise uh, raise them with me. So um for um for state recognition being discretionary, that's up to every state to decide whether they're going to be the um, you know they're going to recognize a state or they're not going to recognize a state. But what happens? And that's that's the textbook version of it. But in real, um, in the real world, what happens is that um, the United Nations General Assembly or the United Nations uh, Security Council gives a recommendation. And um, if I can give you a case in point, is um, Cyprus and Turkey. So what happened uh, be, uh, between Cyprus and Turkey is that um, Cyprus was is currently Cyprus is a state, and I say a state in quotes because it puts it put uh, it puts itself out there as a state, but the the entire world um, no state uh, considers it a state except Turkey. And what happened is that sometime uh, sometime back in 1987. Um, some Turkish troops um, went into Cyprus and they took um, the Cyprus, the, the town, I don't want to call it a town, it's like a county, uh, that area of Cyprus. And uh, the Cypriots, um, they, uh, they started a, a revolution against the, the whatever, the Turks, and they, gave, they got their independence or they gave the declaration of independence. So what happened is Turkey said that it's okay, you guys are a state, but no other state has ever recognized um, Cyprus as, as a state. It's still regarded as part of Turkey up to date. So if, if you are to go to Cyprus today, you will have to go to Cyprus through Turkey. You wouldn't get um, a visa into Cyprus. So that's, that's what happened. Um, the issue of having an embassy in a state Excuse me, kindly. Maybe we can hear Osumba Collins, and then you can answer all of them. Uh, Osumba, maybe if you could, if you could uh, unmute and speak. Yes, thank you, Angie. Um, I, I want to, you know, commend commend Council for a wonderful presentation. But um, um I, I just have a concern that we want to get his mind on. Um, you have. Um, touched on the aspect of Taliban being recognized as, um, you know, a government, you know, so to speak. But um, I'm